Hello and thanks for tuning in to yet another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. My name is Monica and I welcome you in today's interview with Radio Farm Theranostics. The ticker code is RAT, an ASX listed clinical stage radiotherapeutics company leading innovation in radio pharmaceuticals for both diagnostic and therapeutic applications. In 2024, the company achieved major milestones in cancer research, advancing its diverse pipeline and forging key partnerships. Joining us is Mr. Ricardo Canavari, Managing Director and CEO, a seasoned leader with extensive experience in radio pharmaceuticals and oncology. Previously with Novartis, he played a key role in launching groundbreaking therapies and driving global strategies. Mr. Ricardo, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. To start, could you walk us through the key milestones and achievements Radio Farm reached in 2024? Yes, of course, my pleasure. So, um, in particular, the second half of 2024 has been really transformational for Radio Farm Terranostics. We had um, a major objective that was about uh, raising capital for the company and we were able to do it successfully in June 2024. Um, importantly, we had the ability to bring on board um, a key player that is Lanteus Imaging, um, a 7 billion company listed on the, on the NASDAQ that decided to invest 7% in Radio Farm. So our objective in, 20, in the second half of 2024 was really about strengthening the collaboration with Lanteus and we also committed to list on NASDAQ in addition to the ASX. Um, so when we arrived at the end of the year, we were pleased that both objectives were, were achieved. So we listed on NASDAQ at the end of November and Lanteus not only made the first investment, but they decided to do an additional investment of uh, 5%, taking Lanteus to be the largest shareholder in, in RAD, now with 12.1%. So the two key strategic objectives were achieved. In addition to that, we had the uh, clinical objective that was to transition molecules for preclinical to clinical stage. And now we are pleased to have four molecules that are in clinical trial. That's an impressive list of accomplishments, I must say. Partnerships often play a pivotal role in accelerating innovation. Radio Farm secured several key collaborations in 2024. Can you highlight the most impactful ones and explain how they align with your long-term goals in oncology and radio pharmaceutical development? Yes, I mean, in, in this environment, it's very important to leverage other people, other company and other institutions to support what, what we are doing. So I mentioned already one that is the collaboration with Lanteus, a big player in the space, but also we continue our collaboration with the major universities to advance our technology. Above all, I will mention the collaboration with MD Anderson Cancer Center is considered the number one cancer center in the US and probably um, in the world. Our collaboration is going extremely well and we are committed together to develop four molecules that have the potential to be radiopharmaceutical therapies. So all these was, and it is very important because it's helping us that we are a small team to leverage this external expertise and value that can support the development of our products. Collaboration aside, another key highlight was the RAD202 Phase 1 trial. What makes this trial so significant and how does obtaining ethics approval propel its development? Yeah, so we were able to achieve in the in 2024, in the first half, the approval for our first therapeutic trial, that is RAD204, for patients with lung cancer. 
Now, RAD2O2 is another very important molecule because it is addressing the unmet medical need of patients with breast and gastric cancer. So this is what RAD202 is about. So having the ethics committee approval, it means that now we can start dosing the patient, starting with low dose therapeutics and going up at higher doses. We believe that during the month of February, we can dose our first patient. And this is a very large and important indication uh, unfortunately, prevalence in breast cancer is still very high and there is a need for additional therapies. And so the possibility to contribute with RAD202 or uh, to other drugs that are av already available is very important for us. Speaking of clinical advancements, RAD402 has shown promise for prostate cancer patients. Can you outline the key benefits of this treatment and what steps lie ahead for its clinical development? Prostate cancer is one of the first area where it was proven that using a radiopharmaceutical therapy can be very beneficial for patients. There are data showing improvement in overall survival and keeping the tumor under control. Now still, there is no cure for this disease when it becomes metastatic. So it is important that there are additional therapy available when patients progress on the first line of metastatic treatment. And this is what we are trying to do with RAD402, is a, a differentiated therapy uh, for patients uh, that have metastatic prostate cancer we are using a different molecule with a different mechanism of action and also leveraging the unique characteristic of an isotope called terbium-161 that we saw in preclinical data can be very powerful in killing the cancer cell while leaving the healthy tissues almost untouched. So we are very excited to test these products in patients with uh, uh, prostate cancer. And uh, we think that we can enter the clinics and start treating the first patient in the second half of 2025. Now, Mr. Ricardo, shifting the focus to the financial milestone, congratulations on Radio Farm's successful NASDAQ listing under the ticker symbol RADX, as you were saying. What strategic objectives do you aim to achieve by leveraging this listing to support the company's growth? So Australia is our key market and it will remain so. At the same time, we want to be, have more exposure to the largest market that is, that is NASDAQ, in particular for, for biotech. There are some biotech funds, US biotech funds, that invest only in companies if they are listed in US. So it's an opportunity to combine our um, loyalty of the investor in Australia, both retail and institution, with additional possibility to have biotech specific US funds that can invest in Radio Farm. That's why we have the dual market presence as RAD in Australia, as RADX on the NASDAQ. Uh, this is not a short term project, it's not something that we believe can help the company or the share price in the next two, three months, but we believe it can really be helpful in the mid to long term. Also with the NASDAQ listing as a significant step forward, Radio Farm has also been active in capital raising and securing strategic investments in 2024. How have these efforts positioned the company for long term expansion and success? Well, this has been a major milestone for us. Uh, when we were able to raise 70 million Australian dollars in June 2024. At the time, we, we thought that uh, with this investment, we have a runaway until June 2026. And now after six months, we can confirm that our uh, budget and assessment was, was correct. So we think that we have a good year and a half ahead of us without the need to raise additional capital because um, the company is 
spending the money with a lot of attention. We are, we are a small team. We have limited no infrastructure and all the investment really go to clinical trials. So with the money that we raise, we can really fund our uh, four clinical trials that are ongoing and continue our preclinical work on other, on other molecules. So we are very conscious not to spend money elsewhere and really focus all the money in clinical development. And looking ahead to 2025, Radio Farm's pipeline and clinical trials hold great potential. What major milestones or breakthroughs can we expect from the company in the coming year? This is what we call the year of execution of our clinical trials. We think that in 2025, we can uh, conclude our phase one imaging in pancreatic cancer. We can uh, share some initial data on our imaging trial in brain metastasis. And we can share also some initial data on our therapeutic trial, RAD204 and RAD202. In particular, we are targeting around June and July to be a moment where we are going to release to the market some partial but important data of a number of patients that we are treating right now. So I think it's a very important year and we don't want to leave the market uh, blind without knowing what is happening for a long time. So we gave ourselves the objective to have some data release around June, July, and then again, some important data release at the end of 2025. Mr. Ricardo, thank you for sharing such valuable insights into Radio Farm Terranostics' remarkable journey and future plans. Before we wrap up, do you have any final thoughts or message that you would like to share with our audience today? Well, I have to say that uh, what is important is the feedback that we receive from the medical experts, from the oncologists, from the physician, from the nurses that we deal with every, every day. And we saw uh, a lot of excitement. Everybody knows that biotech and clinical development is difficult and is risky. And of course, I, I, I don't want to say anything different than, than that. But there is a lot of excitement because people recognize the potential of our molecule to make the difference for patients living with, with cancer. And uh, so there is a lot of support in trying to advance this molecule as fast as possible with the hope that we can contribute and give some additional tools to the oncology to help patients with those terrible diseases. So it's, it's, it's difficult, but rewarding and exciting at the same time. It's a year of execution for Radio Farm. That's Mr. Ricardo Canavari, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Radio Farm Theranostics. In case you have missed any bit of this interview, you can certainly catch the full interview on our YouTube channel at Calcai Media and hear what he has to say about Radio Farm Theranostics. Do like, share and subscribe. This is Monica signing off now.